Yes, my dear friend, welcome back to the channel. Very good afternoon to you, wherever you are on the globe, especially. Especially on the continent of Africa, in Europe, in America, Canada, Australia, or right here in Southeast Asia, Malaysia, to be precise. Dear friends, Enzo Mareska has spoken. I am always excited to listen to our manager, Chelsea Gaffa, speaking to the press. And today's press conference was not different from the other press conferences. Dear friends, Oh yes, not much different. And I will not be taking much of your time. I would like to go straight away to the issues. But you see, I don't know where to start from because he said a lot of things. Mareska spoke on Sanchez, the errors he made that led to the goal. As a matter of fact, today's press conference, he came in with Kasadai, Cesare Kasadai, yes. He spoke on Kasadai's role as well. And he also touched on Dewsbury Hall. He spoke about many other issues. The playing style of Chelsea right now. And many other issues. But the truth of the matter is that Chelsea, we are making a headway. And I personally like the way our coach speaks. He's not a kind of coach that comes in to give excuses for no reason. He says it the way it is. And so this afternoon, dear friends, I'm here to let you know or to quote our coach verbatim to you. And I would like you to stay glued because before I let you go, I have a news for you on Victor Osimhen. Dear friend, but quickly, let's start with Enzo Mareska on keeping players happy. Yeah, to keep all these players happy, what we know, it's a hectic job. You have 24, 25 players which is average, every team in APL have 24 to 26, even some have 28 players. Chelsea, we have, I think, 20, 25 currently, including Rhys James. Now, minus Ben Chiwell. Ben Chiwell just came into the group. So if you add Ben Chiwell, we have about 27. Yeah. But then, keeping these players happy sometimes it's a Herculean job. And so, if you have a manager that is able to keep all these players happy, then you are good to go. Remember, one of the reasons why I made Ko Palma to leave Manchester City was because he was not happy being on the bench. Coming on as a substitute. I mean, even making impact in substitutions. When he comes on as a substitute, he still makes impact. Ko Palma. But he was never happy. That is why he chose to leave and come to Chelsea. And now he's having a regular playing time. The coach, Enzo Mareska, spoke on the players that are not in the first team playing in the Premier League. You see, he touched on Christopher Mkuku, he touched on Misha. That's my Callum Whitebridge. I'll get to order. But let's start the way he started. He said, Enzo Mareska, on keeping players happy, this is what he said. We try to share minutes with all the players. In this moment, it looks like we have players playing in the Premier League and others in the League Cup or Europe. But in general, it won't always be like this. In general, it will not always be like this. You are playing in the Premier League now. Others are playing in the European competition. But in general, it will not always be like this. It will depend on your form. It will also depend on the opponent you are meeting in the next game. And it will also depend on the system Chelsea want to play. Your form, the opponent you are playing, and the system of formation Chelsea want to play. These are the things that will determine who plays in the next game. The player's form in training, the opponent we are meeting, and then lastly, the system of formation we want to play. For Mareska to explain this, for me personally, I am on the side of the coach. Otherwise, we will have a dressing room that, you know, unhappy dressing room. He continued on controlling of matches. Control of matches. This is what he said. He said, I was for sure more happy with the second half than the first half against Brighton. You see, where most of us, we thought the second half was a bad half. We, we never enjoyed the second half. 
based on the fact that Chelsea could not penetrate and score goals in the second half. The coach is saying in that second half, he liked that second half more than the first half. Even though we scored all our goals in the first half. You know why? He's a technical man. He has an eye to read details. In the second half, the game was more tighter. And he says sometimes we lack control, but we need to analyze the other team also like we need to analyze the other team also likes to control and attack. I don't know where I have the next one. He said, where he continued by saying, the plan that they had for Brighton, what they thought Brighton was going to do, they totally changed their tactics and information. Brighton came and they played totally different thing. And so they, they also had to change or tweak what they plan to do. In order to overcome Brighton, <laughs> uh, Mareska, my head coach, my manager. You see, like I told you, Kasadai was a player that Mareska came in today to speak to the press. But before I go to that, he was asked a couple of questions on Dewsbury Hall not being in the squad against Brighton. Dewsbury Hall not being in a squad against Brighton. Yeah. Mareska says Dewsbury Hall not being in a squad against Brighton was just a decision, but not injury situation. And he also said he has no regret about leaving Ben Chua out of the UEFA Conference League squad. No regret at all leaving Ben Chua out of the Conference League squad. As a matter of fact, he made it clear Ben Chilwe wasn't part of his plan initially. I mean, how, how much honest do you want your coach to be? What else do you expect him to say? Direct and honest. Sometimes it hurts, but you know, like they say, the bitter pills heals the wound. The bitter pills heals the wound. No beating around the bush. <laughs> That is Enzo Moresca for you. Now, on Casadai's rule, on Casadai's rule, he says, I think Cesare did very well in that game. He struggled in the beginning, but finished well. We can see Cesare there again, no doubt. Means that tomorrow's game, he is one of the first names on the team sheet. Yeah. So he can pass on the ball understanding how he has to move can give us good things for sure we are going to see him again in that position <laughs> Cesare is more box to box he likes to attack I work with him at Leicester he can do the other part but needs to provide balance for the team I think he can do that means that tomorrow we are going to be seeing Casadai mainly, hopefully, in the position of Enzo Fernandez. Oh, yes. When it comes to analyzing of games, you see, I like coaches that can look at individual players from different dimensions. I like coaches that can look at a player. You know, the, the reality is that I don't know whether it was a request made by Enzo Maresca or it was a, from the sporting directors to have players that can play in multiple positions. But I think actually we are beginning to see the, the, the reason why and it's beneficial. Yes. From the statement of Enzo Maresca, I personally personally have realized that players that can play in multiple positions are more advanced, you know, they have more advantage. Even if they are warming the bench, even if they are on a, on a bench in every game, let's just say a, a midfielder or a defender that can play right back, center back, center forward. I mean, DM, right back, center back, and defensive midfield. Such a player, if you are on a bench, 
if you are on a bench of any team, you are more likely to play more games than players that play only in specific positions. Because if there's any reason, maybe an injury or something, or a red card, and a player needs to be changed, be it on a right back, center back, or a DM position, like we have right now, we have Renato Viega. Yes, you have more advantage. Now, Enzo Maresca speaking about how we started the season. Enzo was asked, are Chelsea better than they were at the start of the season? And this is what he said. He said, if you analyze the results, if you analyze Chelsea's result, probably yes. But if you don't win games and the performance is good, if you don't win games, but the performance is good and you deserve to win games, for instance, Crystal Palace. Palace, we play, we draw, we drew with them. 1-1, one, one. yes. And that game, personally, I, I, it was, I felt like we lost the match. He said, sometimes you win games and you don't deserve it. Like Bonnemouth. <laughs> sometimes you win games, but you don't deserve it, like Bonnemouth. So it means that he admitted that Chelsea won that game, but honestly, we do not deserve to win it. You see the honesty of your coach. He said, we are ahead of my expectation. We are doing well, but we have many, many things we need to improve. We are happy. The feeling is good. Do you see where your coach, how your coach analyzes games? That is why I brought up players playing in multiple positions. Enzo Maresca is a good tactician. Yes, he is. Before I let you go this very afternoon, dear friend, I will be back and we will talk more on Chelsea. We will analyze more because tomorrow's game, everybody believes. In fact, the whole, every footballing La, football loving fans every football loving fan be it Chelsea, Manchester United whoever you are the belief system right now is that Chelsea has to win the conference league I heard someone someone says the squad, Chelsea squad alone the what of that squad alone is equivalent to the rest of the team that are partaking in the conference league Maresca defends Robert Sanchez and says the mistake at the weekend started with Malogusto. The mistake, Maresca did not lay the, the blame solely on Enzo Mares, uh, on, uh, on Sanchez. So that mistake started with the defender. Maybe I want to go back and watch that game carefully. Yeah. Maybe, maybe, maybe. Because from what I saw, the ball, Sanchez received the ball. And I thought he was going to clear it, but he chose to pass the ball. And the pass could not go through. Well, let me leave that. I will get back. Right now, I'm just trying to deliver to you the press conference, all that the coach had said. Now, finally, it is a hot afternoon. I will not take much of your time. There's so much the coach has said, and I cannot bring you all right now, but quickly. On Victor Osimhen. Oh, yes. Before I go to your shout out. <laughs> uh, like I pointed out, Mareska on Chelsea's form currently. He said, in terms of points, we are doing well. In terms of the way we are playing, we are ahead of where we expected. But the performances can improve. Chelsea's performances can improve. Even though we are ahead, our performances can still improve. Ladies and gentlemen, yes. Now, before I conclude on Victor Osimhen, before I conclude with Osimhen, Mareska spoke on Moedric and lack of starting games for Michael Moedric. And he even touched on Christopher Nkuku. 
This is what he said. He said, I think Mishap played from the start against Wolves in the Premier League. We gave him some games. They all want to play from the start, but sometimes it is not possible. Against Barrow, Misha did very well. I think he was inside. He was okay. Hopefully he can do a, a good game tomorrow. Means Misha is on the first team sheet tomorrow. <laughs> ah. We can say exactly the same for Christopher Nkuku. And this is what he said again. He asked to Chris Wong. He said, the club signed him as a big player. The club, Chelsea, signed Christopher Nkuku as a big player. They did not sign him to come and play in the conference league or to be on a bench. Chelsea signed Christopher Nkuku as a big player, according to Enzo Mareska. He knows this. He knew about it. Yet, Means that this coach can be mean, no? he can be very mean. He's not looking faces at all. A player that was signed as a big player, you are keeping him on the bench or even playing him just in there. He said the club signed him as a big player, and at the moment, he is not playing in the Premier League. But things change quickly in football. Right now, the situation is this, but it doesn't mean it will be the same for all the season. <sighs> Let's get to. Let me conclude with us because this issue, I, I will revisit this issue again on Victor Osimhen. Osimhen speaking for himself. Victor Osimhen, our ah, man. Yes, you know. Is it yesterday or few days ago I spoke about Victor Osimhen coming to Chelsea in January? And I made it clear, Chelsea have not given up on Vitor Simeon. They are still monitoring things, watching the situation carefully. And hopefully, hopefully, the general transfer window, that will depend on Nicola Jackson's performances and the team's performance in general. Victor himself came up and speak. And this is what he said. I mean, he declared himself boldly that he's worth more than 100 million euros. Victor Osimhen has boldly declared his own price tag, insisting his transfer value should be in excess of 100 million euros. What do you think? He is declaring it by himself that his transfer value should be in excess of 100 million euros. If you read the statement carefully, he gave reasons why. He spoke about his strength his ability and capability, his style of play, and his personality. He even added his personality to it. That is Victor Osman for you. That is my man. I like his boldness. I like his confidence. You have to believe in yourself to achieve great things. You have to believe in... Listen, if you don't believe in yourself, nobody will believe in you. Believe in yourself, then you can achieve great things. Dear friend, Victor Osman speaking. Now, quickly to some shout out <clears throat> before I let you go. Yes. Some shout out. The first one. This guy went into my archives. David Wonderson. David from Ghana. You you dig into my archives and brought out my first one of my first videos when this channel started. Whoa. David, he said, I love you so much. I wish I was there this time to support you. David from <laughs> You wish you were there when we, when, I, when we started the channel. My goodness. And he continued, nice one. Another video again, the different one. Then the third one. Wow. David, big shout out to you, David from Ghana. I appreciate. I really appreciate a lot of messages from you. He said, wow, nice. Your start. God bless you. I'm David from Ghana. You see the way I started. Guys, you can go back to my first videos. They are all there. They are how we started it all. David went in and said, wow, this is how you started. Yes. And he even went to my second channel, Malaysia. I drive through Kuala Lumpur, part two. Really? <laughs> Malaysia, I drive through Kuala Lumpur, part two. Yes, it's also there. When you go to my first, you know, my first videos, I was about 
Let's just say about eight, nine months ago, you will see this a drive through Kuala Lumpur part two, part one, part two. Quite, you know, this video's link will link you to my second channel. This video will link you to my second channel. Yeah. All right. Abba Francis Abba says, ex player can talk about the current players if they are not doing well on the pitch. But there should be a way of saying things when it comes to players' attitude on the field. It shouldn't be a direct talk on that player. Thank you very much, Abba Francis Abba. Big shout out to you out there. You are speaking in the way of Mikel Obi and Enzo Fernandez, as I said earlier on in the day. All right, the next one says, Oga, Paul Mason is not assessing players, both team, assessing players, both team, while Mikel was analyzing players' performance. So what they did is differ, said, learn to digest well. <laughs> All right, no problem. Uh, no argument on this one. Big shout out to you, my brother, Bami Bade Fredaios. Big shout out to you. Very good afternoon to you. He also continues, I think at this point, you need to understand how to digest well. He said nothing wrong. What he said is exactly what people are saying about Enzo. Enzo is performing below his price tag. I listened to it live and there is nothing wrong. Didn't you hear the part when he spoke about Kaisedo? Sir, be careful with your emotions. Really? As be careful with my emotions, no problem. Your point is well received. Big shout out to you out there, Bami Bade Fridayos. I believe, just as you listen to him, I also brought a comment from people from that page, from the Care Obi podcast. I brought the, our 90% of comments there, then you understand. We, uh, we don't, you see, well, we that are in today's, we don't look at issues from emotional aspects. No. We don't look at it from nationalistic aspect or ethnocentric aspect. No, we look at it objectively as it's supposed to be. So please do not misunderstand me. You go to the, the page, Mikhail Obi's page, the comments that are there, then you know what I'm trying to put across. Anyway, big shout out to you, my brother, Fridaos in Nigeria. NBC UK says, please, I'm not sending my Kela to, but sometimes somebody may say what she knows because he's a player. You and me, that what a match we have never played a football. You understand it in a different way out. But anyway, that's not a problem. You see, exactly the reason why I said people like him should not be over criticizing or even if you want to do it you have to be very objective because he has been there he knows what it takes like to be in that position that these players are right now big shout out to you anyway NBC from Nigeria Patrick Oliwanga says when will you leave Mike Obi alone you have your own podcast Mike has his own are you rivaling him for popularity Mikel knows in and out of Chelsea than you. It is his own club. Really, because he played in a club, it is his own club. This is the understanding. Because he was, he played for Chelsea and he was paid. So we that have not played for Chelsea and we were not paid by Chelsea, it's not our club. I will tell you that he rather, he, did, he worked for Chelsea and he was paid for the job he did. So I can boldly say he might not even like Chelsea. I can say I can tell you that he, he, he did not even like Chelsea. He did not love Chelsea the way I do. Because I am not being paid, but I'm giving my best for the club. I'm fighting for the club. That someone who is being paid to love the club. Mika was paid to play for Chelsea. Did he play for Chelsea for free? So the club is never his. It is with the fans. We have the club. He played for Chelsea for the money. Oh, yes. He played for Chelsea for the money. But you and I, we've been watching Chelsea. We've been following Chelsea for many years. I have been following Chelsea for well over 20 years. And I'm, I, I was not paid for Chelsea by Chelsea. But because I played for Chelsea, he was being paid. 
So he can never love Chelsea more than I do. Big shout out to your name, my brother, Patrick Olewanke. But don't ever use that word again, that uh, it is his own club. It can never be his own club. He was paid for the job he was doing for Chelsea. If he had done it for free, like we have been following Chelsea for free all these years, including you, Patrick. Big shout out to my brother. He, he, and he continues to say, there are other podcasts that criticize Chelsea players, but you have never talked or angry with any one of them. Why? Leave Mikel alone on his business, please. You see? The anger you want to go, I will not argue with you any longer. Ananias Manga says, good morning, Mr. Selom. Seriously, we are going to win this, ten, this team. Win. This, this team, but they are also good in scoring, but poor in defense. Yes, yes. Uh, Gens, they are good in scoring goals, but they are weak in defense as well. That is true. My brother out there. Anyway, uh, Ananias Manga. On that note, dear friends, big shout out to you guys all. Have a great afternoon. I'll see you in the next one where you see me. Shalom and peace.